Epps out 15 points a game. Going to need that kind of performance from him tonight. Great to see Jaden Epps. He has rejoined his team. Has not been with the club for the last couple of ball games. He is available off the bench for Ed Cooley tonight. So about ready to tip things off. Expecting a really big crowd at Hinkle. As Jalen Thomas and Supreme Cook ready to tip. And off we go from Hinkle. And Dumbaugh leads the Hoyas coming off an overtime victory against Notre Dame. Really needed that victory to get themselves off of Schneid as Styles misses his first shot. Cook with an offensive rebound. And Georgetown Supreme takes the lead. And that's where Supreme Cook is so good. Offensive rebounds per game on the year. You've got to find them to keep them off the glass. Six points, nine boards in that victory against Notre Dame. Just Butler, they play with a ton of speed on the offensive end. Averaging just under 85 points a game. Posh Alexander driving the left hand. He'll go to the line. Well, Ed Cooley, one of the big pieces of news in the Big East, moving from Providence down to Georgetown. First year at the head of the Hoyas. Coach Coach of the Year a couple of seasons ago. Listen, it, it might be some growing pains this year, mm -hmm. but this Georgetown team is going to get really good really fast. Well, he's demonstrated that he could do it at Providence College. Over his 12 years, seven appearances in the NCAA tournament, and he wants to do the same at Georgetown. Josh Alexander making the first. And yeah, knocks down both. One of the better free throw shooting teams in the country. Butler, 79%. Alexander, the transfer from St. John's. Our transfers up and down both of these rosters. <laughs> yes. Styles with the shot clock winding down, get it over to Brumbaugh. And Styles in the corner, he's got to get going. Fall away, jumper rattles in. I like that action there. He recognized that he had a much smaller DJ Davis at 6-1, and we think that's a little generous. Mm -hmm. Able to rise and shoot over the top. And Styles averaging better than 15 points a game. It's on this end where Georgetown really needs to see some improvements defensively. Davis on the drive, able to get by Heath. And Jay Heath never got established in front of the basketball, and that's why he was able to attack him to the right side and get to the front of the rim. That's that every improvement on the defensive end that you just spoke of. DJ Davis, 12 points in a victory last time out against Saginaw. One ball fires from three off the mark, and run down by Davis. Down on Brumbaugh, tapped out of bounds off of Brumbaugh. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Thad Mata back in Indianapolis, second tenure with Butler. Last season, some growing pains, of course. Lots of transfers, 14 and 18 a season ago. But a much more talented roster this year. There's so much more firepower at all five positions on the offensive end. Telford to Alexander. Two on the shot clock. Alexander falling away. High archer goes. He's so good at speed dribbling you one way, gets you to retreat, and then that creates the airspace for him to be able to get that shot off. That was great. Well, that's one of the things that Ed Cooley wants to see. He wants to see Posh Alexander turn into a scorer. And you have to do that because he does such a good job of serving the floor. Look at that little quick dribble there, a little snatch back crossover. Able to freeze the defense and able to shoot that over the top. When you're playing against guys that are dynamic passers, as Posh Alexander is, you've got to make him the score. You've got to give him one or the other. You can't give him both. Right. Styles passed up the three, got bumped, and he created a tough shot. That's good defense by Telford. He's such a good position of defensive player to defend one through five, number 11 white. 
Telford with a mismatch on Brumble. No whistle following the shot. There's Thomas. Thomas. Darren Thomas is so active on the glass, and that's exactly what you should do. When you see your power forward shoot the basketball, you've got to find an angle to the glass to try to get an offensive rebound. That's exactly what he did on that possession. Eight boards for Thomas in just 13 minutes in the last game against Saginaw Valley State. Tend to shoot a lot of dribbling here from Heath. Brumball's got to get going. In amongst the trees, Cook doesn't see the shot clock. It's going to be a violation. And partner, they're going to see that a lot tonight because Butler does a great job of switching one through four. And so now you've got to have guys who are able to create offense off the dribble. And that's why I think Jaden Epps is going to be so important to get him back on the floor because if you can play him and Brumbaugh together, now you have two guys who can create offense in late shot clock situations. See Drew Fielder there. He's on the floor for the first time as well as Jaden Epps, the Illinois transfer. Almost 19 points a game for Epps. Hasn't played since the Syracuse game back on the ninth. Yeah, I like this lineup because with him and Brumball on the floor together, now you have two playmakers that the offense should run a little more smoothly. And it's a good action. Brooks inside to Thomas, ran into the double. Telford put on the brakes, now kicks it away. Brooks for three. And after the long rebound. Really interesting to see Jalen Epps and how his conditioning is. Hasn't done much of anything since last Monday as Brumball with a rim run. The hesitation dribble throws the defense, creating that angle for him to get to the basket. That was really nice. By two. A minute's gone by in this one. No shot clock reset. Brooks driving. Had it tapped away and a foul. Takes us to our first time out of the night. 8 6. Butler at home. Back and forth we go in the Big East opener. It's the Mass Singer season finale. We do a little flashback to Saturday. Georgetown, an overtime victory over Notre Dame. Miles are closed. Yeah, don't watch LaFonso. Okay. Marcus Burton tied, uh, gave Notre Dame the lead. Then Brumbaugh tied it with one second in regulation. The suit of the three-pointer put Georgetown out in front of the Supreme Cook. Put it away for the Hoyas. Four-point victory. Seven wins all of last season. Only one road victory for Georgetown a year ago. That was here at Butler this year. Already seven wins for Georgetown. We talked about how Ed Cooley was going to turn it around quickly. Already as many wins this season as they had all of last year. Indeed, and he talked about in the offseason he really likes this group. He told us that even this morning, but they hadn't really dealt with any adversity. They dealt with some adversity and were able to overcome it in South Bend. That's a huge step for this new collection that's together for Ed Cooley. You get a foul on Drew Fielder as Andre Screen was backing him down. Screen 7-1, 255 Bucknell transfer with a big body at the disposal for Thad Mata. And my younger son Walter played together at Bucknell. A great kid. Tough shot and it'll be an offensive foul. Screen going over the back. And they'll get him for a personal, no bucket. I guess when you're 7-1, you yes. can try and do stuff like that. See that little look on his face. He knew he, what, what, Mr. Ralph, what? Okay, fine. <laughs> Hands up, I didn't do yes, it. Yes, yes. Because of the switching of Butler 1-4, Georgetown's going to have to get some slips to the basket. Fielder for three. Off the glass, no good. Telford with the rebound. Didn't like that one. That ball never touched the painted area. The fielder still feeling the hot hand a little bit. Picked up 16 points, a career high his last time out against Notre Dame. Screen going to work on the fielder. He's got excellent patience and footwork when he catches the basketball inside. What a move. In a game where... In today's day and age, there's not a lot of post-presence. Screen has some of those great moves, and when you need a bucket, go to him. The 
defense tell for <laughs> yes, like it down right to Sood. I mean, this is incredible from Telford. Masood launches. That was an incredible individual effort from Telford. Tell you what, if you're just going to stand out there and dribble the basketball, no dribble handoff, no change inside, you have no shot against this Butler team because of guys like Telford who can keep the basketball in front. And not only does he keep it in front with his feet and chest, he uses his hands to kind of keep it active and keep you frustrated. That was a tremendous defensive play for the Bulldogs, especially for number 11 and white Telford. Telford. 25 earlier this year against Texas Tech. Just an incredible player. He loves to defend the opposing team's best player. Screen inside for two more. They found something down low in screen. Yeah, a little screen action. Defense jumps toward Landon Moore, number 14 in white, opening up the baseline for screen to be able to receive it and finish. A couple of young kids on the floor right now for Butler with Finley Bizjack and Landon Moore. A tumble on the floor for Georgetown. Just move to the left hand, Brumbaugh. Second opportunity and miss a shot. A clean a second look as you'll find. Telford driving and knocked away. Alexander got his hand on it. Now Brumbaugh, no, follow is good. Dontrez Styles. This is an excellent offensive rebounding team at Georgetown. Third in the Big East with 12 offensive rebounds a game. Trying to slow down the pace after a couple of frenetic possessions. <laughs> Little look pass it is Telford from the elbow. Tapped out of bounds. It'll be Georgetown basketball. Keith checks in again for Georgetown as well as Pierre Brooks. Georgetown on a bit of a 2-3 look there. You're going to see them mix their defense tonight. Low zone, low man, maybe even a little full court pressure. And every now and then you're going to see them trap dribble handoffs as well. They want to try to keep this Butler offense a bit off balance. That was a really nice call from the bench there by Ed Gula. One of the things that we've seen Butler do pretty consistently is get the runoff with a three-point line so far. Yes. See how everything's in isolation right now for Georgetown. That benefits Butler. Epps on the drive. Epps hangs, couldn't get it. Cook another offensive rebound. That's so good. On the dribble penetration from Jaden Epps, number 10. Cook just went on the baseline side because his man, Andre Stream, stepped up to try to block that shot, and that's exactly what you should do on the opposite end. Good read by 24 and Black. Cook should get Stream another touch inside. He's been pretty unguardable here early. Deep three by Posh Alexander. Brooks with the follow. One of the downsides of playing zone, open lanes for guys to be able to get to the offensive glass. Pierre Brooks, 21 and white, Rith, that one beautiful. Brooks double figures in every game so far. Transfer from Michigan State, Alexander, and up on his backside and screen right there to intercept the pass. Moore driving Moore with the layup, blocked. Great hustle by the senior, Wayne Bristol. Mm -hmm. I like the pace. Dontre Styles didn't draw any whistle. Cook is there for the dunk. There's a lot of contact there. There was, but everyone involved, especially the two additional defenders, were all vertical straight up. A lot of contact there, but that was created by the offensive player. Good no call by the officials. Cook with some high percentage shots right at the rim. Bizjack passed up the three. He's set. Green backing down with baseline didn't get the roll. Epps drives. Epps no. Bizjack keeps the ball for Butler. And this is a game that where one team doesn't matter what the tempo is. Both teams like to play fast. Get a foul on Epps. Got his hand on Landon Moore. 
I'll tell you what, the offensive rebounding game is strong for both teams. Yes, Supreme Crook has done a terrific job of finding open lanes to the basket. Anytime he sees a defensive player lift up, he's been able to get behind it off to six points in this game. Great start for him in the painted area, kind of just off the post. And what he wants him to do is to back it down or turn and just go by him and use his size at 6'6 to be able to elevate over the top. Anyone who's guarding him out there is like 6'2 at the very tallest, and you want to take advantage of that mismatch. So far, Ed Cooley's Hoy is hanging in there with Butler. It's a two-point deficit. Yeah, Styles, great numbers on the season. Mm -hmm. As you said, Lafonso, he's got an advantage on the inside. Indeed. And Georgetown has been able to stay in this game on the road on the glass. They have eight second chance points of their 12. Brooks for three, and the first one from distance for either team. Hit by Brooks. Well, he's really blossomed under that lot of playing with a lot of confidence in the young season. Brooks for five points. Go inside, Cook created some space. He got two more. He's able to get two feet in the painted area. Jalen Thomas, number one in white, has got to fight that and make him catch it off the block. You give anybody the basketball two feet in the paint, that's an easy score. Cook is so springy. Moore puts it on the deck. There's Cook with those strong arms creating the turnover. Really good defense by Jaden Epps. Number 10 and blue. First turnover of the game for Butler. Epps leads in. No good. Fielder with the rebound. Thomas altered it. Cook again has it. And a foul. Two, three, four opportunities for Georgetown and came up empty. Georgetown has been exceptional on the offensive glass. They have eight offensive rebounds in this first half alone. And for Cook, he's got four of them. Moore goes to the bench. Cook letting it cook. <laughs> I see what you did there. So he's got a great first name to have some fun with, too, in Supreme. Indeed. A little zone look here by Georgetown. To get that basketball in that big east area and look to attack. Telford puts it on the deck. Cook had the shot blocked. Out of bounds. It will stay with Butler with 10 on the shot clock. Cook did a really nice job pushing him to his left side and making him get back to his right hand and easily able to contest it there and just not able to come up with the possession. Josh Alexander to inbound. Trying to get some space and could get it. And Bristol got hit in the head. He is down underneath the basket on the far side. He's going to foul on Thomas. And Bristol <laughs> still fighting his way back up the yes, end of the floor. Yes. I, I couldn't quite see. Elbow glance over the top. Forearm elbow graze. <laughs> yes. Bristol going back at Thomas. Thomas made it tough for him to get there. So far, Georgetown has made Butler play against a set defense. I think Butler's got to play with a little bit more pace. They can get Georgetown to miss shots. Have Posh Alexander push that basketball up the floor, flatten that defense, and see if they can get some easy ones. Well, for DJ Davis, if that motto was telling us he's got great range, but I don't know from the right ear of the bulldog in the middle of the floor is where he's talking about. <laughs> Not for your first shot, anyway. <laughs> I guess you work your way from as far out and as far in as you can. It's going to be out of bounds off of Georgetown. Step aside here at historic Eagle Fieldhouse. Three-point lead for the Bulldogs.
three-point lead for Butler, but Georgetown hanging in there thanks to Supreme Cook. He's been awesome. He's been magnificent, particularly on the offensive glass. He has four offensive rebounds in this game already. They were able to get it to him down in the post. Really patient getting over that left shoulder. Eight points, five rebounds here in the first half. He's see, been extraordinary. You see the numbers for Cook. He's got eight of their 14 total. He's four of five. The rest of the team's three out of 18. Ed Cooley talks about this Georgetown team being one of the best three-point shooting teams he's ever had. And he's had a lot of great shooting teams. Providence yes. as an assistant at Boston College. He says this Georgetown team shoots as well as any of them, if not better. They've shown it so far tonight. Yeah, they're the second best three-point shooting team in the Big East so far. 37% making nine per game. Haven't needed it so far. Well, speaking of threes, in and out. Got every part of the rim possible. It'll be Butler ball off the foot of Masood. As a shooter, that is the Butler absolute worst. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you, you shoot it just slightly short, and it just hangs out up there around the rim. You think, oh, yeah, a home rim? No. So frustrating. Another possession for Butler. Having a tough time getting it in. Heath now on Davis. Davis going baseline. And now a chance to go to the line for DJ Davis. This is exactly what DJ Davis needed. An opportunity to be able to go to the foul line and see a shot or two go through. And all of a sudden, if he can get his confidence going, he could be a problem for Georgetown. Line forward. You got a really good free throw shooting team on the line. One more team foul, and you're in the bonus for the rest of the half. Davis has only missed two free throws all season. I'm knocking on everything that is a hard surface around me. I, I won't blame it on you. That's all right. You see Irvine transfer, shot 40% from the three-point line, shoots it, defends, and can create off the dribble as well. Not to mention having seriously cool hair. No doubt. He's definitely an 80-grade hair guy. <laughs> I could use some of that. Experiencing his first Midwest winter to California kid. Masood has had no space. Alexander took it away from him. Get it to Davis. Transition passed up the three. Davis to Thomas. And now going the other way is Heath. Three on one for Georgetown. And somehow, some way, Butler came back and made it a tough shot. Yeah, I thought Dontrez style number zero in black should have kept dribbling that basketball to make the defender have to adjust to him. He gave it up a little too soon, so that's why they couldn't get that easy basket. Like here, he's got to keep driving it, make him commit, and then make the pass. Thought it was a little early there to make that decision. Just the third team foul on Butler. 7 one to go in this first half. Conference opener. Marquette visits Providence after us. From Providence. Mismatch for Styles on Davis. Styles just inside the free throw line. And that's what we talked about earlier. Whenever he finds DJ Davis, who's six, six feet tall, Gardner, he's got to make a quick move to the basket and just elevate over the top. That's well executed there by Styles. And his own look again here for Georgetown. Davis on the other end for three. Well, we talked about it earlier. Those two foul shots allow him to be able to see the ball go through the net, and then all of a sudden you get your confidence up, and he knocks down an easy three from the right wing. He gets going. He can carry a club. Four of six from three last game. The has been silent for Georgetown. Brumbaugh did heat up by Telford. And a whistle. It looked like Telford was doing a great job on Rumble. He's called for the foul. No, he does. He does a terrific job of moving his feet. He keeps a wide base, and with that wide base, he just moves his feet really well. That's a good call by the official, though, because just as Brumbaugh turned over his left shoulder, little hands on the body, so you got to be careful. But his positioning is extraordinary. He fires for three. Rims in and out. Styles trying to keep it alive and over the back. 
Foul shots the rest of the way for Butler. And you put one of the best free throw shooters in the country at the strike. And if I'm Butler, the rest of this half, I'm driving it. Just trying to pick up fouls along the way. And to get to the line and put easy points on the bat on the on the up on the scoreboard. Knocks down the first. That motto would actually like to see him shoot it a bit more. Uh, this is such an unselfish team, and I think that's part of the reason why they've been so successful here early. That group last year was a bit disconnected, and I would argue a little bit dysfunctional. Not this group, and I think a lot of that has to do with Posh Alexander and DJ Davis's willingness to share the basketball. It's been a huge calling card for all of the great Thad Mata teams, right? A lot of team, not a lot of means. Yes. Had some great individual players. Take nothing away from that. Great team efforts as Davis picks off the pass. Up ahead. Fizz Jack. Fouled by Styles. Yeah, that pass wasn't there. DJ Davis read it beautifully. And then a nice little pitch ahead to Vizjak. Not wasting any dribble knowing that Styles is on the way up. I thought that was a goal ten because I thought that ball hit the backboard first. thinking the same thing. Very, very close. Well, Vizjak had it rolled in and out. Take a look. See if that hit the glass for Close. <laughs> in, real, in real time, I thought it hit the backboard first. As perfect timing as you could get. These officials are so good being able to see that in real time. We can slow it down. One out of two for Biz Jack from the line. The suit checks back in. And Styles heads to the bench. Two fouls for Styles. Jaden Epps, 10 in black, Brumball, 1 in black, and Masu, 25 in black. Those guys have got to be able to create some offense for Georgetown. Otherwise, that offense is going to continue to sputter, and they're going to have a tough time here on the road against Butler. It's been all supreme cook. He has half the points for Georgetown. Brumball, that's a fielder for three from the wing. Got it. Boy, Georgetown needed that. Timeout, timeout called by Georgetown. 5-16 to go. This first timeout break. Fielder knocks down a big three. It's brought to you by your friends at Upland. Brumbaugh did a nice job of attacking the right baseline. And Fielder just filled in behind Octane offense of Louisville. That's going to be a really intriguing game. And Coach Brown going from Purdue to Louisville. Mm -hmm. And for USC, Caleb Williams. Mm -hmm. now back on the hardwood, Georgetown and Butler, six-point game. Ed Cooley can't speak highly enough about Drew Fielder. He says, listen, he's going to put a little bit more weight on him. They got him when he was just under 200 pounds yes. at 6'10". He's already put on 20 since getting on campus. He looks great. Back-to-back -back double figure scoring games, only one previously and that was the first game of the season he's really stepped up his play as a late his own look here by georgetown gonna drive and try to get into the middle biz jack looking for help finds davis got run off the three-point line down to the corner biz jack short on his three it's a good look set the rim masood for three He's just not had a feel for anything yet. And a blocking foul on Brumbaugh as Brooks, all 6'6", 240 of them was coming down on Brumbaugh. Rowan Brumbaugh never able to get two feet in his chest in front of the basketball. And this year, in the past, he would have had an opportunity to get a charge. This year, They've been charged with making sure that they call that correctly. Never established himself defensively. That's a good call by the official. Brooks hits the first. Georgetown has yet to go to the free throw line in this game, while Butler has only missed one free throw. And part of that is Georgetown is much more of a jump shooting team than they are a driving team. So it really doesn't 
how they get to the foul line is when they're throwing it inside or if they're getting on the offensive glass and getting fouled. And Butler is a team that plays defense without fouling yes. to number two in the country. Average just over 12 fouls per game. Fielder just inside the three-point line off the heel. That's a quiet first half. That's on the drive. And I believe we're going to get basket interference. Not going to count the bucket. Mm -hmm. But Epps will go to the line. And partner, that's what we've been talking about. Those are the kind of plays that he and Brumbaugh are going to have to be able to make. Use their speed and change of direction off the dribble to be able to get in the lane and make plays for themselves and their teammates. If he can get himself going here, it will really help Georgetown on the offensive end because they have really struggled on the offensive end. That's yeah, so over three so far from the field. Hits the first free throw. Thomas checks in for screen. He picked up his second foul just moments ago. Similarly, that we talked about earlier with DJ Davis, needing to see a couple of good things. Maybe Epstein to go through here from the foul line can get him going on the offensive end. And Georgetown really needs a little full court pressure here from the Hoyas. There's a quick turnover just over the hands of Heath. And Butler sets up their half court offense coming up on four minutes to go. Zone look again from Georgetown. Ball's got to get to the middle of the floor. Here's Jack for three. Didn't look good out of his hand. And Davis was out of bounds. Takes us to a timeout. Ed Cooley a little fired up at his Hoyas. They trail by six. I was looking at my ancestry trace the other day. I figured it out why well, I never actually made the football team. Taking the trip down I-95 to Washington, D.C. Can the Huskies continue their winning ways? They've been unbelievable this year. The defending national champs of Shaka Smart, the defending Big East champions. They're off to a great start. Here's the preseason poll. Have Marquette at the top of Creighton and then UConn. Basically flip those, right? And that's what you get at the moment with UConn number five in the country, Marquette number six, and then Creighton at number 12. Your top three teams in the Big East. But hey, Butler is nine and two right now. They were picked to be 10th in the league. Much more firepower on this Butler team than last year. They're so much better defensively. They're connected on both ends. I think that's a little low uh, for the Bulldogs. And I think this league's going to be surprised by how much they've improved on the offensive and defensive ends of the floor. Epps driving. Epps able to hang and hit his first field goal of the game. He's who we talked about with Brumba off the floor being much more aggressive and assertive trying to get in the lane and make plays. He's been much more aggressive over the last two minutes. They need that from number 10 in black. Question marks about his conditioning. He's looked good so far. Butler throws it away. Fourth turnover for the Bulldogs. The middle ball screen's been really good. Epps driving and he'll go to the line one Big Ten transfer to another Big Ten transfer And what's happening right now is we talked about this Butler team will switch one through four and what's happening is they're catching Georgetown is catching those guys switching and anyone who gets on Epps that's not a point guard in front He's putting his head down to get to the basket and that's exactly what he did when he saw that Pierre Brooks was guarding him after that switch Really good read by Epps Epps at 75% from the free throw line. Last year with Illinois, averaging almost 10 points a game. This year, averaging almost 19 a game. Back-to-back mm -hmm. -back 30 point games against Jackson State and American. Well, and he's a guy that, he's a volume shooter, right? He's able to take some shots and Ed Cooley mm -hmm. saying, hey, listen, you got to live and die with it yes. sometimes. Well, the kid who shoots 41% from three and a guard who's shooting 46% from the field in general is pretty efficient. Telford, little baby thing, was asking for help. Mm -hmm. I thought he got fouled there, but a nice play. Good offense from Butler. Keep Epps in that middle ball screen and allow him to be able to get a mismatch that he wants and then drive it to the basket. Alexander and Epps, that is a great matchup to watch. Heath, step back three. Short, and a rebound by Brooks. That's a subtle. Brooks on the drive. Strong finish. 
He's so good. He's like a freight train when he gets going downhill. I wouldn't have tried to get in his way either. <laughs> no way. Not at 6'6", 240. Mm -hmm. Davis, deep three in transition. Got it. He's feeling it. Go all the way back to those two free throws that he made. When you have a shooter who's struggling early, if they can get to the foul line or get a layup and see it go through, then you have a problem on your hands. And that's exactly what Georgetown has with number four here, DJ Davis and White. Bristol inside fielder had it knocked away. Listen, Butler starting to feel their rhythm, starting with Pierre Brooks. Yeah, we talked about Butler being able to get out and transition, try to get some early ones before that defense gets set. And now all of a sudden, you get a layup from Pierre Brooks. Now you get a three in transition from DJ Davis. That offensive attack is really starting to crank up for the Bulldogs. Well, this was a two point game just a couple of moments ago. Butler on a 7 0 run. Thomas makes it 9 0. The dribble penetration from Pasha Alexander forced the big to come help. Jalen Thomas did a nice job relocating into the open area. Alexander took it away. Two on one. Alexander. <laughs> Former defensive player of the year in the Big East for a reason. Three times. <laughs> During his time at St. John's, he led the league in steals at two per game, and that's exactly what he's averaging on the season. Epps for three. Rebound pulled in by Thomas. Butler sets some blood in the water right now. And Cook almost pulled it away from Posh Alexander. Bosh Alexander lights up anybody he's on. You just can't play with the basketball in front of him. He's got such quick hands and he reads you and able to get out in transition and get yet another bucket for Butler. It's like a LaFonso Ellis swipe from NBA game right there. <laughs> I don't know about that one, Bobby. <laughs> That's a good one, though. <laughs> That's effort missed. Thomas, second opportunity. And a held basketball. It'll stay with Butler. Our own little version of WW SmackDown. What do you think? For sure. And Butler's going to call a timeout. 20 seconds on the shot clock, and about 14 seconds the difference in the game clock. DJ Davis slow to get going in this ball game. He's got four. He's got good range. That last three that he hit, the one we just saw, that's deep three. Yes. But that's good range. Oh, without a doubt. After him getting a chance to see the basketball go through the net. Now, if he tried one of those right now from left here, I'd be comfortable with him knocking that one down. We might call the heat check if yes, it go in, but <laughs> he's at least got a little some up base to build on. That's right. Thomas got it. Nice Still able to see it go through. That low pass face to his left froze the defender and allowed him to get that angle to his right to get that little shot off. 13 0 run right now for Butler. Talk about ending that half on a positive note. Georgetown's looking to just get some points. Pursued. Turnaround jumper got it. We have Brooks on skates. And the horn sounds. Butler's got a 13-point lead as we go to the half. Yeah, the all of a sudden, Butler able to play with some pace, get out in transition, attack the basket. DJ Davis able to knock down a three in transition. That's what they needed to get them some much-needed momentum going into halftime. 40-27 our score. Butler out in front of the Big East. Ability able to get out in transition himself and score. Ten transition points for Butler to Georgetown, zero. And for Georgetown to get back in this game, they got to get something from their backcourt. Rumba, Heath, Epps combined two of 15 from the field. First half stats brought to you by Jeep. There is only one. And are we going to get a turnover right out of the shoot? No, it's off of Butler's Telford. 
And Georgetown still has the basketball. I'd say Telford individually mm -hmm. on defense was amazing in that first half. He really was. He does a terrific job of getting his feet at a wide base, and he moves his feet so well, keeping you in his chest. Can defend one through five, and we saw that in the first half. And just two points was one of seven from the floor, but his impact was on this end of the floor. Styles, good for two. He was quiet about the last ten minutes of that first half. Mm -hmm. And because of all the switching, it really took him out of his rhythm. And I love the fact that Ed Cooley went to him early to try to get him going because they're going to need him here in the second half. Brooks from the corner for three. And it's out of bounds. But over the backboards of Georgetown with another possession. Is Butler empty on their first possession in the second half? He scored the first time. I'd go right back to Styles. Screen. Great screen from Masood trying to give Brumbaugh just an opportunity to get the basketball up the floor. Keith trying to create some space and missed the little bunny and then Cook missed the jam. Can't miss easy opportunities like that on the road. Telfer going right at Brumbaugh inside to Thomas for two more. Supreme Cook did his job coming over to lend some help. Ishmael Masood just stood in his spot. You have to be on a string defensively. Your teammate moves, you have to move. Really good offensive execution from Jalen Thomas stepping into the open area. Rumbaugh trying to dictate a little pressure, asking for a little help to get up and again go back to this offense from Butler. You see how Supreme Cook came off Jalen Thomas to help. What you don't see is over to your left off the screen. Ismail Masood never came over to fill that gap, and that's how Jalen Thomas was able to get so wide open. Thomas, a very well-rounded day so far. Eight points, five boards. Brumball at the line, hits the first. 80% free throw shooter. He's been really good over the last two games without Jaden Epps on the floor. 15 points a game, six rebounds. Three assists. He's been absolutely terrific. And what that'll do is build much needed bench depth or guard depth, if you will, when he's back healthy. That's one thing for Ed Cooley. He just has not had a lot of cohesiveness with his lineup, yes. right? One guy goes down, another guy gets sick, or someone hurts his hand. They just haven't gelled fully as a team. Alexander spinning around and it's foul. Masood got him on the wrist. There's a point later on in the summer that he couldn't even do five on five because he didn't have enough bodies that were healthy to be able to compete. So certainly behind the eight ball in that category. Ed Cooley upset because he thought that the foul came before the active shooting for Posh Alexander. So instead he's at the line shooting two. Ooh. And the first one finds the bottom. At the Big East and steals three straight years wide at St. John's. And what I love about him is, even as small as he is, they'll play him out of the post at times because he's such a good passer and really good one on one in the post offensively as well. Kind of makes you think of a, a Butler guard of a few years ago, Roosevelt Jones. Mm. Not a big guy, but kind of thick. He <laughs> yes. can create his own space. Yes. Low center of gravity, hard to move off the block. Isolated on Alexander. Now another paint touch. That's Cook. Cook with the left hand. No, Thomas. Great job defensively, but Cook maintaining another offensive rebound and finally in the finish. How impressive has he been on the offensive glass? He's averaging four offensive rebounds per game on the season. He had just he had as many in the first half. He's got five offensive rebounds today. Just one defensive rebound as Telford goes to the rack. That's his second bucket of the night. Contested three buries it. 
Georgetown needs that kind of production from 25 and black. They want to get that guy hot as Brooks on the other end. Keith runs it down. Mike Butler in the first half. I think Georgetown has some opportunities to get out of transition as well. They can't continue to just walk the basketball up the floor and play against a set defense the entire second half. Another offensive rebound by Supreme Cook, and the basketball is going to stay with Georgetown. There were three Butler players, and now DJ Davis grabbing at his ankle. There were three Butler players trying to get that loose ball, and Davis. Like he got on the bottom of the bottom of the pile. He's right underneath the basket. So he got the strip away there, and then did he roll his foot on the, on, the on the official Pat yes. Driscoll? Wow. Yes, yeah, step backwards. Didn't see the official. Yes. Mm. Wow. Did a great job of getting his hand in and mm -hmm. stripping that ball loose on Supreme Cook. And now down on the play, Davis with 12 points. He's able to get up and mm -hmm. tie that shoe tight, big boy. Do not take it off. No, do not <laughs> take that <laughs> shoe off. Do take that yes. shoe off and you might not be able to get it back on. Indeed. 12 points in the first half of Davis. Mm -hmm. And he'll be checked out by the training staff. Meanwhile, Bizjack checks in, and Thad Mata goes back to the drawing board. With this defensive lineup in of Butler's, I think they got to get that basketball in the place to stop. Run ball off the rim, and a decent look from the corner. Able to get back in transition. Into the corner, Bizjack. Rimmed in and out, Telford trying to keep it alive, and it will stay with Butler. And Screen's got a bloody nose over there, number 23 in white. He's going to have to change his pants, too. So Screen, who just checked in. A couple of Butler Bulldogs in the last two possessions that have to be cleaned up. He's still being attended to in the locker room, and now Screen trying to stop his nose from bleeding. And some blood on his short, so he checks out. Big East Conference play, baby. That's right. Looks a little different than the olden days. Alexander with the rainbow, and a foul will go against Georgetown. It's a really nice job by Ishmael Su, 25 in black, of keeping Pasha Alexander in front and making him take a tough two. Because he wants to try to get by you, draw help, and make a pass. 20 more seconds to defend for Georgetown. Telford for three. Brooks off of, it'll say Georgetown again. So another possession to play defense for Georgetown. Butler up by 10 at home. December 27th on Fox. Tis the season for the Holiday Bowl. Kick it off, baby. Louisville looks to put the finishing touches on their best season in 10 years. Wow. While USC aims to light up prime. Delayed for just a moment. I believe this is still some of the remnants from the Andre screen blood situation. Yeah. He's all cleaned up and available to come back. DJ Davis still being evaluated back yes. in the locker room. DJ Davis, they will certainly miss his shooting if he's going to be out for a little while. His ability to be able to space the floor allows guys like Posh Alexander, Pierre Brooks, those guys to be able to attack off the bounce and get to the rim. We saw the, the leggings of Jalen Thomas there. There's Andre Scream making his way back out onto the floor. And shorts and all. This definitely looks like an old school big knee sketch. It really does. The holding, the grabbing, the blood. Everything but the body tape so far. Indeed. Seven to shoot for Butler. Telford backing down on oh, 10 air ball. Trying to keep it alive, and it goes to Styles. Got a push here. Keith has pocket picked by Alexander. 
You have to know where he is on the floor at all times. It's the fourth turnover, I should say the eighth turnover for Georgetown, Biz Jack. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Alexander bombing and weaving his way for two more. How about the change of speed and change direction with the dribble? Impressive. Double figures for Posh Alexander. Styles kind of putting on the jack against Telford. It's a losing proposition. It's not really his game. He's more of a two dribble pull up kind of guy. From ball to space, from ball off the mark. Telford there to alter the shot. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, Alexander is so smart with the basketball. <laughs> he is. Commands the team from the point guard position very well. Brooks got around the seal, lost it on the way up, was sued with numbers. Styles. With a hero step for two more. See, I think Georgetown needs more of that. Anytime they can get Butler by the turn it over or miss a shot, they've got to go the other way and run for layups. Styles and double figures. Joint Supreme Cook with 10 or more points. The zone look here from Georgetown. The blue floor. Telford's wide open, missed the floater. He's been short on all of his shots tonight. Well, that's a shot that just isn't. It's available a ton, but the feel for it is kind of lost in this generation of players. Yes, and he can make those shots. It's just that I've noticed tonight it's just been short. Cook trying to rip it away. It's a held basketball. And it will stay with Butler. Anthony Hornets 20 through Fielder. Anthony Bullock's 23 on the Subs coming in for both teams. Screen checks back in. Moore also checks in. Telford and Thomas to the bench. Jaden Epps checking in for Georgetown. Pierre Brooks 21 and White's playing a small ball four right now. I think Butler should give him a look, especially if Georgetown goes out of this zone look into a man once they've got the basketball in bounds. And for Epps, six points, only one field goal made. Holding a play here for just a moment. I believe checking on the clock. Bizjack, ball fake, Bizjack on the run. Closed out at the wrong angle, and Bizjack just took off, and it's hard to get help when somebody just kind of takes off and drives unencumbered to the lane. Here on 17 for Bizjack last time out. Epps for three, in and out, and Moore secures the rebound. Moore driving again. Trying a lot of success in the paint. A timeout called by Georgetown. Posh Alexander telling the Hinkle Fieldhouse to get on their feet. Georgetown's defense has really faltered as of late. Straight line drives to the basket. Doesn't allow for anyone to be able to come over to help. That was the first one. And here's the second one. Oh, uh. Switch at EpsonEcoTank.com. Just fill it, Joe! Saturday on Fox Primetime Hoops. Big East Showdown is Rick Pitino and his St. John's Red Storm take on Tristan Newton and the fifth-ranked UConn Huskies. It all tips off Saturday, 7.30 Eastern on Fox. So, with some bad news for Butler. DJ Davis rolled up his ankle on the foot of an official earlier in this second half, tried to give it a go, but just been told that he will not return to the game. Frustrated, of course, 
ice packed on that ankle and back into the locker room. Yeah, everyone's just trying to be cautious and it's early in the Big East Conference season and obviously you want to win the game on your home floor, but you don't want anyone at this stage to have to deal with any lingering injuries as you get into the middle, late parts of Big East Conference play. Meanwhile, since the injury, Posh Alexander has taken over this ball game, at least scoring-wise. The 10 points in the game, six assists. He's got three steals. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Georgetown finds himself trailing by 14. Got to have some pretty good looks at the bucket here. Rumbaugh off the foot of Moore. Five extra seconds on the shot clock. The perimeter players of Georgetown have to find a way to heat up. Ten in black. Epps Brumball, number one in black. And I don't expect a lot of scoring from Bristol Jr., but if he can get some back cuts and get on the offensive glass, it would go a long way to allow Georgetown to get back in this game. If not, they have no shot at winning this game on the road. Swing around Cook trying to look for space. Screen doing a good job on him in the post. Styles puts it on the deck. Styles had a block with two hands by screen. Like a volleyball block of the net. Yeah, Jamil Telford, number 11 in white, does a nice job of continuing to trail him, and that allows the angle for Andre Screen to be able to block that shot. Now, he could have just done it with one. He does it with two. <laughs> it's impressive. Four on the shot clock. Brumbaugh's got to get it in. Moore deflects into the hands of Bizjack. Like a quarterback, you have to be able to look off the defender and make that pass. He was dialed right in, and what a nice read there defensively by this Jack. And the turnover for Georgetown, nine in the game. Close touch, screen, Bumba able to alter it, out of bounds. 11.57 to go from the Hinkle Fieldhouse. Opener, Big East play, Butler up by 14. Here's hoping we can all be home for the holidays. Not really. Celebrate like only the Jeep brand can. With everything you could ever wish for, including Jeep. Yeah, Ed is saying that you're on the road and you're down 14. You're still in striking distance. Can we put together two stops, maybe three kills, get out in transition, get some easy ones on the offensive end, but stay the course defensively. We've got to get stops. We've got to start filling up the basket, too. Yes. For the last seven from the floor. They have not scored in the last 222. And for a high-powered three-point shooting team like Georgetown has, they're just two for 12 from beyond the arc tonight. And the screen is fouled by Cook. And a quick little glare from Andre's screen. Cook picks up his second foul. Moore driving, no whistle. Got the reckless to stop. Now can you get a bucket? That basketball's got to change sides of the floor. Georgetown gets stuck at times on one side of the floor, making it easy for Butler's defense to be able to play it. Styles paint touch to Cook off his hands and out of bounds. So they got the stop, then turn it over. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of been emblematic of the game for Georgetown. Right when they've been able to get something good on the defensive end, they turn the basketball over. And you certainly can't do that on the road. It's a momentum killer. Telford not short on that baby hook. Yes. Zone look from Georgetown. You got to be able to get it into that foul line area. Great execution there by the Bulldogs. Six for Telford. Just three made field goals in the game. Three at 12. Styles in rhythm rattles it in. A couple of those staggered screens up above the key got his defender to trail. Greeted that open look for Styles to knock that one down. Styles leads all scores with 13 now. Go up top the screen, tapped it in. That's so good. 
a little elbow action and you just have the low side big just duck in and throw it over the top good offensive execution there by Butler seven one yes Here's another three and Bristol knocks it through a timeout called by Georgetown starting to feel it now in rhythm from deep 12 point lead for Butler, but it's tough to defend this. Yeah, look at this. Not a lot of ball pressure there. And you have a seven foot two guy in. Three steals and Styles had a good second half. He's starting to really assert himself. And when he finds himself with a mismatch against Butler's smaller guards, he's got to use his athleticism to get the lane and shoot over the top. Or when they direct post him, to not spin, but to drive, attack, and shoot over the top. So far, he's done a nice job. See Georgetown using a little pressure as mm -hmm. it coolly used the timeout. It's only got one timeout rest of the game. Mm. His own look here. One, two, two. Little matchup. More for three. Short and an air ball. Screen fouled. It's amazing how Screen was able to come away with that rebound. He was getting boxed out pretty well by Styles. Well, it helps you when you're 7 2 and Styles is 6 6. <laughs> He's got a little length advantage on the interior. His long arms and Styles just picked up his fourth foul. That's, That's big. That screen hits the first. We talked about how yeah. this Georgetown team is really good at shooting threes. 37% coming in, but a different story tonight. One of the big keys for Thad Mata is chase him off the three-point line coming in. Yes, and when we talked to Ed Cooley earlier, they're making nine per game, which is third in the Big East. However, he thought they needed to make around 12 or 13 in order for them to win this game, and they're far from that so far. Styles with his four fouls stays on the floor. Meanwhile, Supreme Cook goes to the bench. Jalen Thomas will check in the screen. Good run there for screen. Hey. Full court pressure, man pressure here from Butler. <laughs> I think it Cooley realized, hey, Drew Fielder subbed in for the wrong guy. <laughs> Fielder replaced Cook. He wanted to replace Styles and Cooley was saying, hey, he's got four fouls. Gotta be careful. Styles stops and pops. Fielder with an offensive rebound. Lost it. Bodies on the ground. Brooks has it. Now Posh Alexander on the move. Telford on the drive. Blocked by Fielder. And Telford on a second opportunity. Yeah, Ed Cooley is incensed right now because he didn't have all five guys on the defensive glass. So the story of missed opportunities in this game so far for Georgetown on both ends of the floor. 16-point lead for Butler. He's on the drive, gives it up. Bristol. Trying to shoot. Styles for three. Boy, what a big shot from Trez. He does such a nice job of staying low on his dribble, which allows him to be able to explode into that three-point shot. Good paint touch into Thomas. Thomas and a travel. I tell you, with four fouls on him, Styles did a nice job of fronting on Jalen Thomas. He really did, and I was concerned that he would pick up that fifth foul, but watch as he laces them up here. A little side step to create some space to be able to get that shot off, but he's able to get into it because his knees are nice and bent and his center of gravity is low, allows him to be able to spring easily into that three ball. So Styles heads to the bench with those 16 points and four fouls. Epps on the floor and the suit back on the floor for Georgetown. 13 point deficit. Good. He's so good with that. A little burst to the elbow area, freezes the defense, and soft touch over the top. Absolute eight. 
Just two field goals made. Telford for three, not to be. Masood with a long rebound, trying to cut it to single digits. Andrea Cook on screen. Cook with the left hand, no. That's in Alexander's hands. It's a really nice move there, just missed it. Good patience. Good technique on the hook shot and just missed it. A rare miss from Supreme Cook today. Timeout under eight to play from Hinkle Fieldhouse. Bottler up 11. Before you use AI to transform business, accelerate growth, Spots out there on the floor. His pull-up game is superb. Whether it be from the post or off the dribble, and he's been able to knock down some timely threes for Georgetown. And it seems like every time Georgetown gets it to the place where they can get it to single digits, they miss a block out. They turn the basketball over. They gotta capitalize at least one of these times when they've been able to get a stop against Butler. They have so far not been able to get it to single digits, though they've been hanging there for a while. Dontre Styles have been terrific in keeping it close. And Styles just got a little bit of a blow, but he's on the floor with four fouls. Mm -hmm. really the only guy in foul trouble for either team. And he is tasked with guarding Posh Alexander at the moment. Yes, zone look here from Georgetown. Can't settle if you Butler. Brooks for three. That's a settle. They're trying to cut this in, into single digits. Georgetown trailed by as few as two. About three minutes to go, but then Butler went on 13 to run to close out the first half. They can just get it to single digits. They'll put some game pressure on Butler, and we'll see how they can handle it. I like this. Posting up on Posh Alexander Brooks trying to help into the corner. Masood for three. Too strong. Styles able to tap it out to Masood. Styles for three. Got it. 19 for Styles. Finally, we're able to get it to single digits. Now, all of a sudden, Butler starts to feel a little pressure, and this zone's been good. Butler cannot settle. They've got to get that basketball to the Big East area or in the post. Telford nearly had it knocked out of his hands. Brooks puts it on the deck. Brooks lost it. Someone's open for Butler. Tapped out. Moore, three. Answers on the other end. And that's the type of three that you want. Dribble penetration, touch the paint, cause the defense to help, and kick it straight over. That's good offense by the Bulldogs. Felt like every pass for Butler was getting tipped mm -hmm. by Georgetown. Just not enough. Coming up on six minutes to go. Taps around the screen. Styles again. And it's out of bounds off at Georgetown. Styles had the hot hand, but a little too strong there. Last couple of threes back to back we go. Masu able to find Styles, who's been hot, feet set, and knocks that one down. And good offense by Butler. Little dribble penetration, able to find more 14 in the left corner for a knockdown three as well. More 32% three point shooter. Alexander splits the defense. Little hesitation dribble throws everybody in the stands, including me. And then the burst to be able to get to the front of the rim. That was extraordinary. He needs to go get his points for his team. He's been the guy to do it. Tapped away by Moore. He fends up with it for three. Couple of Bulldogs battling for the rebound. It's in Brooks' hands. Nine points, five boards for Pierre Brooks. Man to man here from Georgetown. He's down to eight. It's back up to 13. Cook knocked it away. Telford drives. Telford hits the layup. He did a beautiful job of protecting the basketball with that right inside shoulder. That was nice. Epps for three. Short. Alexander ended up on his backside. Wicked screen from Supreme Cook. Brooks 
expires from three in and out. Screen trying to keep it alive, and there's Styles for the rebound. Butler's got to attack. They can't just settle for those threes. That three is good. Epps fires the three. The question with Epps, having missed two games, does he have enough energy to be able to push for these next four minutes? So look again here from Georgetown. That ball area has been good. Tapped away by Cook up ahead. Heath on the break. Alexander nearly turned it over. Heath inside for two more. Back to a 10 point game. Butler faithful getting a little bit tense. Indeed. Zone look from Georgetown. Middle of the floor. Risky pass, Alexander. The styles on him. The four fouls able to rip it away. Coming up on 30 minutes to go. Epps had it poked away by Alexander from the backside. Three on two for Butler. Brooks is fouled. Posh Alexander, when Butler is needed to stop, they have got it. But Georgetown hanging in there on the road. Georgetown's been able to hit some timely threes, and Jaden Epps just winds them up and drills this one from three. Georgetown down 10. He did attack the painted area. Shooting from three tonight, just four out of 18. But this is not a team that, that typically gets a lot of points in the paint. But they are open drivers, splitting defenders. It's been pretty easy for Butler tonight. Yeah, and Georgetown at times has just not gotten control of the basketball. And they've been able to get some straight line drives to the basket as well. We've only seen one missed free throw in the entire game, by the way. Again, knocking on everything that is of a hard surface. <laughs> One miss from Butler is all. Brooks two for two, making him look okay. And he's now in double figures with 11. Double figures in every game for Pierre Brooks, mm -hmm. Michigan State. He's got the burst of speed to be able to get in the lane and create offense for himself and his teammates. My only concern for him was having taken two games off, would he have enough in the tank to be able to push through here in the last four minutes of this game? He looked pretty good on that possession. You've seen your answer too. Ryan Brumbaugh, Roland Brumbaugh has not seen the floor for a while. Mm -hmm. Epps short on the first. 75% free throw shooter coming into this game. He's Rumbaugh checking in from the suit. Another ball handler on the floor that can create offense for Georgetown. Gets up. One out of two from Epps. Neither team the bonus. Butler a long ways away from getting into the bonus. Just two fouls in the second half. Telford put the brakes on and let him fly right by. Yeah, that's what you want to do against full court pressure. When you get it over a half court, oftentimes you have four and three back in the backcourt or in the front court. And in that case, Butler able to attack and take advantage. Well done by Telford. Telford with a dozen tonight. Rumbaugh. Needs some help, and now stolen away. Alexander, another steal. It's his fifth in the game. Up ahead on the fast break. More blocked on the backside. Bodies on the ground. Epps comes away with a loose ball. Ron Bond able to get two more. 11 point game, 140 and counting. And a foul oh, on Styles, and that is his fifth. That is a silly foul by Styles in this time and place. You can't commit that foul. He's too valuable to this Georgetown Hoya team. 19 points in this game. Been able to knock down some threes. He's an excellent rebounder and defender. 
That was not a smart play from number zero in black. He's done a lot of good stuff in this game. That was not a good decision in mm -hmm. wide open space. Yes. So Styles has a seat with his 19 to lead all scores. Masood checks in. It's a long Midwest trip for Georgetown. Yes. Started at Notre Dame. <laughs> yes. They've been in Indianapolis for a couple of days. They'll leave after the game tonight to go up to Milwaukee, take on Marquette on Friday. We're finally going back home. Josh Alexander going to run the 92nd deep offense. Mm -hmm. I want a foul here. Trying to make them take a tough shot over extended arm and rebound. Brooks driving. Will Kareem Hunt goes for him? That's so good. You see the technique on that shot? Kareem would have been impressed. Yeah, no doubt about that. That was a great play. Rumbaugh uses the window. And Ed Cooley uses his final timeout. I mean, this is from the Wayback Machine. <laughs> we were talking earlier, there was a reference made to Kenny Rogers. We yeah. don't anybody who knows Kenny Rogers, but that was a sweet sky ball. Oh, after a little crossover dribble as well. Coming schedule, we talked about their game coming up against Marquette. They'll have the holiday off in the new year. We'll be at that game yes. in Milwaukee on Friday. Then at home to play Creighton. We have three straight home games to Paul Seton Hall, and then they go to Connecticut. Those first two, Marquette and Creighton, Georgetown's got to control the tempo of that game. They've got to make that a slow down, half court, first to 50, maybe 60 kind of game. They can't allow those two teams to establish tempo with turnovers and ill-advised shots that are basically like turnovers, which allow those two teams to get out of transition. Well, for a team like Butler, who's averaging almost 85 points, and, and they love to get out there and run, mm -hmm. Georgetown's hung in there well yes. enough. This is a game where Butler did not shoot the three very well. Thomas is running out of trouble, and it's a travel. And Georgetown creates a turnover. Not done yet. It's really smart by Georgetown. Often teams will foul right away. No, you want to give your defense an opportunity to be able to try to get a trap and tie the basketball up, or in that case, you force a turnover with the travel. Epps to inbound, 54 seconds to go. Masood three here. Epps trying to get it in play. Masood saves to Brumbaugh. What a save by Masood. Now Brumbaugh on the drive. Rejected by Thomas. That might put the nail on the coffin. Posh Alexander on the drive. He's fouled. He'll go to the line. What a block by Jalen Thomas. That was terrific. Because Brumble actually got the angle, but he continued to pursue. And when you show a shot block of the ball and give a chance, he gets to it very quickly. Jalen Thomas with a terrific defensive play for the Bulldogs. Thomas has had a great night tonight. Eight points, seven rebounds. A couple of blocks. Three of those seven rebounds on the offensive glass. And get a new pair of tights for his efforts with the blood stain and a rip in his knee. Yes. The manager has those on standby. They'll be just fine. Holy jeans are in. Maybe the holy leggings are in too. <laughs> Alexander misses the free throw, but an offensive rebound, and not much Georgetown can do about it now. It's a great effort by Butler. Really good effort on the road by Georgetown. Brooks at the alley oops to Thomas. No good. And it's out of bounds. We'll go to Georgetown, 26.4 on the clock. Eight points, eight boards mm -hmm. for Jalen Thomas. Four guys and double figure scoring for Butler. Really good balance for the Bulldogs. Swing it around the suit. Goes baseline to suit. Nope. And a foul. The suit will go to the line. He was fouled by Telford. Uh, as a coach, that's where you're saying, guys, just give them the layup. <laughs> we don't want to put them on the line and allow them to get 
easy shots with no defense, putting points on the board without the clock. Looking good. Masood makes the first. A little save for those that were visiting their local sports books. It was a ten and a half point line. <laughs> Look at you. Big free throw coming up from the suit in that aspect. And the suggestion that we just got a lot of people just turned on the television. <laughs> <laughs> Great Al Michaels would say significant to some. Not all, but some. <laughs> Butler, they can dribble it out. Ten point win for Butler. Seven straight victories and now eight and O oh at home. Yeah, I, I just thought Butler was really good in the second half by establishing some tempo, getting out of transition, getting some easy ones. Four guys in double figure scoring. Good balanced attack on the offensive end from Butler. Great way to start Big East play. Got another one coming up soon.